Greetings everyone, my name is Atterville, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Mega Man Maker. Continuing on from the last episode, I'll continue covering levels that were submitted to Nature's Rat, starting off with this one. Warning, fire burns blocks and wood, don't cross white line, buy without only, with 16 plays and a score of negative 3. I've covered 5 levels so far, 2 were removed from the server before I could cover them, and one I already covered in a previous episode. If you are interested in seeing what this challenge's rules were, check out the topmost link in the description below. Also as always, the full disclaimer of this entire LP series is linked in the description below. Also in the description are the timestamps for all the levels that I cover in these parts, so if you want to check out for levels covered, expand the description. Oh, I see. If I jump too high, I'll get crushed. That's a neat challenge. I'm just worried how difficult it'll become. A fumble on my part. Next section with a hot dog. Oh, that was easy. Thank you, dear push block. I didn't realize that the push blocks could just one shot the mini bosses. I already knew they could one shot all enemies, but I didn't know if they could do it to mini bosses as well. Oh no, we actually have fake floors, which means that this stage was text edited. I knew I was eventually going to cover a level with fake floors, and here it is. Let's see how to do this properly. Not like that. How do I cross this gap? Not like that, of course. No, that doesn't work either because of that one block. And I can't tap jump either. Seriously, how do you do this? It must be a precise tap jump. Oh, like that. Well, more fake floors. Or rather, I got knocked under the platform there.
Oh, and that's it. I was expecting the fake floors to get a bit trollish, but they didn't. For a stage with this negative score, it wasn't that bad. I just wish the fake floor gimmick was actually taken a bit further. I already covered this level back in episode 255. Next up is Frozen Facility by GW9, with 20 plays and a score of 7. The previous stage's aesthetics weren't that good either, they were okay at best, but at least the checkpoint placement was okay. Then again, it didn't use its white line gimmick enough, along with its fake floor gimmick. There could have been some interesting setups using the combination of the two. Despite all the hairy hairies, they aren't too annoying. Is this a split pathway? No, just for an extra life. Oh, that was very straightforward. Silly me. If I encountered this level during a Wily Challenge run, that extra life would be more worthwhile. Let me see if this is a bottomless pit. It isn't. This may be an alternate route. But we'll have to see. No surprise big fish there? And yet that happens, I got too haughty. Let me see if that's an alternate route. It is an alternate route. Actually, it's just for an E-Tank, so it's just a side pad. Is there something down over there in the corner? That looks rather suspicious. I won't risk it though. Not until I hit a checkpoint, but there isn't one nearby.
Overall, this was an okay but pleasant level. Aesthetics and music choice were nice, and the difficulty progression was also nice as well. I say it's your average middle of the road Mega Man Maker level. Next up is Punch Block Forest Challenge Submission by OutSynced with 13 plays and a score 3. This stage is looking to be about 15 to 20 screens long. Once again, I wish there was a counter on the loading screen, or at least the intro screen. There is enough space to put it there after all. So introducing the Katan Bayons here. And the previous screen introduced us to the push blocks and punch blocks. Now the evil crows here, as well as the poles and pole eggs. You forgot to fill in the square in the top left there. This stage feels like it was kind of rushed. It doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Now you have the cracked blocks. First introduced in a safe environment. Now we have these over more dangerous environments. Well, at least the stage feels like it's going somewhere now. After that lull in the middle. Um, nothing more to say about this stage. The best parts were that last section with all the push blocks and the punch blocks. So it appears that this level designer removed their level from the servers. However, they also submitted version 2 of their stage to me as a Veersmid level. So I'll cover it here now, which is Freezing Woods version 2 by the number 1234567, with 23 plays and a score of 4. Interesting music choice here using Gravity Man's stage team.
seems like this level takes place in a frozen facility next to a frozen forest. Introducing the Shadow Man platforms. Generous checkpoint placement. I wonder though, after I finish covering all of the levels that were submitted to this level design challenge, I'm curious to see what's going to be the most popular team. When I say team, I mean level team. Is it going to be a forest, a facility, fire, ice, thunder, earth, etc.? Place your bets in the comment section below. From the looks of it, I have a hunch that it's going to be ice. It's going to be either ice levels or forest stages. The next most popular category are going to be fire levels or water levels, and the least popular category is going to be sky levels. But we'll have to see. That was a very close one, I thought I was gonna die there. I would have preferred if these were introduced in safer environments, the missile fish that is. As we're kind of thrown into the fire here. I do like how this stage has an overall unified blue color scheme. Oh no. At least the stage is wrapping up in difficulty. I just wish the introductions were better. And this stage wins the reward of having the prettiest aesthetics out of all the stages I've covered in this episode so far. But yikes, it's challenging. But mostly for the right reasons. All of the damage I'm taking is due to my incompetence. And it's well utilizing all of its enemies and gimmicks.
And there were several near misses I had in this stage. Yikes. Toadman with two seal cohorts. Oh no, this is gonna be a problem. Especially with ice physics. If I can keep Toadman in place, I'm in good shape. This boss fight could be so much more painful if it was another boss. As long as you keep your cool and fire at continuous intervals, you should be fine. I edited out two failures, but otherwise this was a good level I'd say. Or at the very least, decent. Currently my favorite level of the episode. Good work, the number. Next up is Gravity Flow Nature's Rat Challenge by 8JKN4 with 28 plays and a score of 5. Another stage with a blue color scheme so far. This time I have infinite access to the water wave. Or rather the water wave is my primary weapon. Nice way to both introduce its uses and the crab bots. as well as the water shotgun. This really looks like it should be underwater by the way. It has the same color scheme as being underwater, so... And I have to pick up that E-Tank again. Oh well, it's only about 30 seconds walk back. Still, there needs to be some better conveyance. Let me double check though, before I rest my case. Oh, wait a minute. That white line indicates when we're outside of water and when we're inside of water. As showcased with that Gary Obi, aka that fish. I should have paid more attention there. These lines always indicate the boundaries between inside of water and outside of water. That's also a nice way of introducing the missile fish.
No surprises, and there's a nice difficulty curve. This is currently my second favorite level of the episode, probably the honorable mention. Though I wish the enemies weren't so easy to dispatch of. And the environments are getting kind of samey. Then again, the stage is ending right over here, so it's okay. It was about 25 screens long. Just stand here and whittle him down. The graphics were okay, I just wish there was more variety. Otherwise, I like this stage overall, it was above par. Next up is Nature's Rat Toadman's Takeover by Trashman22 with 11 plays and a score of 4. There appear to be several stages with Toadman as the boss. I see oil in the water. I'm suspicious. Are we going to have oil fires? Or are we nearby a toxic oil spill? So I guess this is nearby an oil rig, and they're doing some drilling for oil here, and that's angered the natural inhabitants. Aesthetics here are okay to decent. And the level progression feels more like a fortress level, as at several points it's assuming you understand how these gimmicks already work. Is there something here? There isn't. I'm always wary of these types of jumps. And here's our first checkpoint, or perhaps the second one. I forgot if there was one earlier. Whoops, I forgot I could do that.
That was easy. And very short. I'm just waiting for a pop-up attacker or a big fish enemy. I see, these are the oil extractors, or mineral extractors. On to Toadman himself. We need to shoot him in between the hole. That's going to be a slight problem. Especially if I miss, so let's try again. I don't think I can hit him with his weakness from here, unless it's the water wave. Let's at least give it a shot. Nope. At least these Toadman encounters are not pushovers. See, trying to make the shots accurately with the charge shots is much harder than using the regular pellets. So I'll use the regular pellets instead. The hardest of all the Toad Man encounters in this episode was probably the one at the end of Freezing Woods, but even then that was heavily pattern based. And the hardest parts of that fight were the ice physics and all those seals. But here they're on the same side of the screen so it isn't as difficult. The easiest Toad Man encounter was the one at the end of the previous level. So in this episode, I covered 6 more levels that were submitted to this challenge. Plus I skipped over one level as I already covered it during a previous episode. Out of all these 6 levels, my favorite one would be Freezing Woods version 2 by the number 1234567. So in the next part, I'll be covering several more Veer's Mid levels. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Toodles!